Better late than never, right? Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to The Continuing Chronicles. Today, I'm bringing you my February check-in. This is just a video that I'm going to do at the end of every single month where I talk about the books that I'm unhauling, the books that I have hauled, how my reading month in general went for the month of February, what is kind of going on in life. And then at the end, I will wrap up some of my TBR numbers and tell you how it is going and how I'm progressing towards my goals. Now, by the time you see this, I believe it's going to be March 9th. Normally, I would love to have had this up much closer to the end of February, but things have just been crazy. I got kind of slumpy in the middle of February. I talked about that a bit in my February wrap up and I think I might have mentioned it in my March TBR as well. And then on top of that, things have been insanely busy with work. We have just recently entered the advisement period for summer and fall. And so basically from March 1st to the end of August, I'm going to be slammed all of the time. And not only that, but I will be starting my next class in my grad program on March 15th. So for the most part during the days, I'm only able to focus on work and schoolwork. I can't take the time to film. I can't take the time to edit. I can't take the time to do anything like that. And so because of that, some of my content is probably going to be up a little bit later than I normally would like. I don't know if I'm going to be able to maintain the two videos a week schedule as much as I want to. In fact, I've already been failing at that over the past couple of weeks. And so I think for the next few months, right now my content is probably going to be some of the standard stuff that you already see, like mid-month wrap-ups, final wrap-ups, TBRs, check-ins, things of that nature, things that really just focus on what I'm reading, what I'm loving, what I'm hating. Those are really the videos that I personally like to watch on booktube as well. And as much as I would like to film extra content, content for you, things that are not directly related to what I'm currently reading. I don't think I'm going to have the bandwidth to do that at this time. But during periods when it's a lot slower, when I have more time that I can actually dedicate to filming and editing, I hope to be bringing you extra content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the books that I will be unhauling in the month of February. If you watched my February mid-month wrap-up, this is going to come as no surprise to you. I am unhauling From Here to You by Jamie McGuire. I got halfway through this book when I decided I needed to DNF it for my own personal sanity, and I do not regret that at all. I do not think about this book. I do not wish that I had finished this book. This was not what I was expecting, and I really don't think Jamie McGuire is going to be an author that I continue with in the future. I'm also going to be unhauling my two Vari McFarlands. I have Here's Looking at You, and you have me at hello. I originally picked these up because Chelsea from Chelsea Dulling Reads absolutely loves Vari McFarland. She's read several of her books and has really, really enjoyed them immensely. And because of that, I wanted to go ahead and pick them up. And while I did overall enjoy the reading experiences, each one I had a lot of technical issues with. I had a lot of gripes. So while overall, I would say my reading experience with them was more pleasant than it wasn't, I just really don't think that these are the kind of books that I want to move forward with in the future, especially since I'm really trying to curate what I'm reading and mediocre reads, even though they were overall pleasant. Just don't do it for me. There's no selling point there for me. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these two. I think I'm also going to unhaul the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I did read this in February and I did really, really enjoy this. I gave this a four stars. I thought it was sweet, heartwarming, charming. I loved all of the characters and the interactions. And it was such an approachable way to learn a little bit about World War II and what people experienced during World War II. But I think I mentioned this in my February wrap up that as much as I enjoyed this and as much as it gave me all of the warm and fuzzies, and that's why I gave this a four stars, it's so short. It's written in epistolary format. And so it's very quick read. I really just don't think it's going to stick with me. The feeling might stick with me. Like I might look back on this and think, oh, that was so sweet. But I really don't think I'm going to remember everything that happened. I'm definitely not going to remember all of the individual characters or anything like that. And I think if I leave this on my shelves, one of these days, I'm going to look at it and be like, hmm, I don't really remember anything that happened in this book. So I haven't 100% decided I'm going to unhaul this, but currently it is in my unhaul pile. Next, I'm going to unhaul The Wicker King by Kay Ingram. This is one that I was keeping around because I had heard so many good things about the companion novel to this. I believe it's called like The Weight of the Stars or something like that. And everybody loved it. Like everybody who reads that book gives it five stars and is bowling and they just loved the experience of it so much. But a lot of those people also really loved this and I did not like this. I had a lot of problems with it and it's not something I look at and think of fondly. And because of that, I'm looking at it on my shelves. I'm like, why am I even keeping that? Even if I did decide to read The Weight of the Stars in the future, why do I need to keep this just because I might read more Kate Ingram? So I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because I just, I didn't enjoy this as much as everybody else seemed to. I just didn't enjoy it overall. And I think I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm also going to unhaul An Abundance of Catherine's by John Green. This is one of my least favorite John Green's and I don't really want to keep it just because I'm keeping all of other John Green's books. In that video that I made with talking about authors that I needed to read more from to determine whether or not I wanted to continue 
continue with them. I think I've made the decision that I'm not going to continue with John Green because John Green's books never blow me away. The Fault in Our Stars was the only John Green book that ever blew me away. It was the first one that I read by him and all of the books that I've read since have just been meh or decent but nothing spectacular and because my tastes are changing and I'm moving away from YA especially YA like this I really don't think his future releases are going to do it for me anyway and because of that I feel a little bit more confident letting this one go and I might even let go another one or two and just keep my absolute favorites of his on my shelves but this one's going this was a two stars absolutely unremarkable so it's gonna go another one that I'm not 100% sold on unhauling is Lillian Boxfit takes a walk by Kathleen Bruni I picked this up secondhand at second and Charles back in 2018 this was still when I was pretty new to book of the month and I was trying to collect all of the book of the months like anything that sounded remotely interesting to me I was picking up and in some ways this does sound interesting to me this sounds like it's going to be a really interesting character study about Lily and Boxfish based on what I've been reading and enjoying these days I'm not sure if this is something that I would really enjoy so if you have read this book and you have feedback on it please let me know otherwise I think I will get rid of it because I'm tired of keeping these I'm not sure books on my shelves because I think if I'm that indifferent towards them or I think if I'm that lukewarm then it's probably just better to get rid of them and if in the future I do decide to read them then I can always listen to it on audiobook and if I love it truly then I can go ahead and pick up another copy but for right now I'm not 100% convinced on this one. I also have I Have No Secrets by Penny Jolson. I believe this was another one that I picked up as part of the YA book of the month subscription back when they had it and I was still subscribed to it and it just sounds okay. It really sounds like this is going to be one of those high octane kind of young adult thrillers that is fast paced and easy to read and is like a page turner but in the end it's probably not going to be anything super original. It's not going to be anything memorable. It's not going to be anything that I connect to and I really don't know if I want to waste my time on it. Again if you have read this please let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you think that it's worth keeping but when I look at this I'm just not excited about it. I just don't think it's going to do anything for me so I think it needs to go. I also have Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pimbro. This was on my February TBR. This was the only book in my February TBR that I did not get to and I think I'm okay getting rid of it. This is another one that I've been looking at and I haven't been really excited about. I've heard some very terrible things about about this book and even her newest release in general and I don't even have any interest in that one. I think I'm okay leaving behind her eyes as the one and only Sarah Pimbro that I read and just calling it a day on this one. I'm not sad about unhauling this. I'm not sad that I didn't get to this in February and I think that's just a sign I need to let it go. I also have Winter in Paradise by Ellen Hildebrand. I picked this up in 2018 when I was still thinking that she was going to be an author I wanted to read. I read the first book in her Winter Street series and really enjoyed that. I thought it was a very sweet cozy holiday book. The kind that you just want to read during like the Christmas season but then I picked up another book by her perfect couple and I didn't really enjoy that at all and then again I started to realized that my tastes were changing and I just didn't think that her books were going to be for me but I kept this on my shelves because first of all it was a book of the month edition. I've been really really hesitant to get rid of my book of the month editions. I've definitely been a lot better about that recently. Even the ones that I've read I've been unhauling if I haven't really been enjoying them but I'm especially hesitant to unhaul the ones that I haven't wanted to read. I'm being a lot more selective in the ones that I bring into my home nowadays and this was just one I got because I thought Ellen Hildebrand was going to be an author that I wanted to continue with. If I'm not continuing with Ellen Hildebrand as an author and I definitely don't really care to continue in this series. Like why even bother keeping this? So it's gonna go. And then I have Hour of the Assassin by Matthew Quirk. This was another one I did read in February and it was okay. It was three stars. I've almost already forgotten everything about it. I really don't need to keep it on my shelves. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the books that I have hauled in February. The first book I wanna talk to you about is The Mistake by L. Kennedy. This was another one that was on my February TBR. I did read it. I did enjoy it. I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. I'm definitely excited to be continuing in this series. This series basically follows the sex capacity and romance of college students at Briar University and I have enjoyed the two that I've read so far so definitely glad that I have this in my collection and I will definitely be continuing with that series. Next I have The Familiar Dark by Amy Engel. This was kindly sent to me by somebody in the No Shelf Control Facebook group. I had actually gotten her for the monthly gift exchange and I sent this to her and she knew how much I enjoyed the Roanoke Girls and she enjoyed this as well so she went ahead and sent it to me so I am so glad that she did. I enjoyed this not as much as the Roanoke Girls but I definitely come to appreciate Amy Engel's dark writing style and so I will definitely be continuing with her and as an author and I will absolutely be keeping this. I also received my very first Pieces and Pages bookish subscription box in February and in that box I received The Line Between by Tosca Lee. I cannot seem to find it at the moment. I have no idea where it went. I'm sure it's around here somewhere but I actually just finished that today. The day that I'm filming I just finished it and I really enjoyed it. So I'm so glad that that first box netted me a book that I really enjoyed. I actually just received my March box today and I will be filming a video unboxing that one as well. I don't know if I'll be able to get that video up before this one. If not, 
it'll be the next video that I upload after this one. So I'm definitely glad to have the line between by Tosca Lee. I believe it is actually a duology, so I may end up continuing with that because I enjoyed it that much. Next, I have the February books that I got from Book of the Month. Of course, I got The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I don't need to know much about this. This is a historical fiction. I believe it's set during the Great Depression, during the Dust Bowl, and I don't need to know anything more. It's Kristen Hanna. I love her. I've enjoyed every single book that I've read by her, and I will definitely be continuing with her as an author, and I'm glad to have this one on my shelves. Next, I have Girl A by Abigail Dean. I don't know too much about this. I believe it is a psychological thriller that follows our main character who escaped her family's house of horrors, basically. She grew up with an incredibly disturbed family. Her mother ended up in prison. Her father died, and now she's been left with the family home. So I guess her and her siblings I think return home and there's a bunch of things that are revealed and betrayals and it's all about sibling relationships and things like that. It sounds dark, disturbing, a lot of interesting character dynamics and relationships and I am definitely here for it. Here's the line between by Tosca Lee. If you wanted to see the cover I apparently had moved my stack of TBR books and I did not remember doing that. Such has been my month y'all. Then I have the Starcross Sisters of Tuscany by Laurie Nelson Spielman. This when I read this this kind of reminded me a little bit about the movie called Under the Tuscan Sun. I love books set against the backdrop of Italy, especially when the plot line deals with reinvention, discovering yourself, uncovering secrets, and I think that this is exactly what it's going to be about. It follows the Fontana family, and I guess hundreds of years ago a curse was placed on their family, and now any second-born daughter is doomed never to find their true love. But when Amelia and her cousin are invited to accompany their great aunt to Italy, she is told that she was destined to find her true love there. I'm definitely interested to see how this plays out. It sounds like it's going to be a sweet, heartwarming, family story but also a love story as well so I'm excited to get to this one. I also received Glimmer of Death. This came in the book drop bookish subscription service. It is out in the living room and I just am too lazy to go get it y'all but this is a cozy mystery and it's definitely outside of my comfort zone but I'm in the middle of reading it and I'm enjoying it so far so hopefully it will turn out better than expected. And then last but definitely not least I received my fairy loot edition of the Ember and the Ashes series by Sabata here and they are stunning so I will show them to you one by one. Here is an Ember in the Ashes. Look at that gold foiling. These are the sprayed edges. And then this is the naked hardcover. How beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, it is stunning. Then I have A Torch Against the Night. Also beautiful. This has blue sprayed edges. And then here is the naked hardcover. I love that blue and gold combination. Here we have Reaper at the Gates. And here's the naked hardcover for this one. And then the fourth and final book in the series is Sky Beyond the Storm. It is this beautiful pink color. And then here is the naked hardcover. These are stunning. I love them. I have read the first two, but I have not read the second two. So the second two will remain on my TBR. And that reminds me, I also need to go ahead and unhaul the first three that I have in the old editions. So these are the first two books that were in the original editions. These are the newest editions that have come out with. These are the ones that you would buy now if you were going to get the series. And I didn't already have the fourth book. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul these as well because I don't think I need two sets of them on my shelves. All right, y'all. So those are all the books that I've hauled and unhauled for February. And now let's go ahead and touch base with regard to my TBR numbers. So at the very end of January on my virtual TBR, so all of these books are books on my Goodreads to read shelf. I had 426. And at the end of February, I have 388. Now the lowering of this number encompasses many factors. It's lowered because I read some of the books that were on my TBR in February. I've unhauled some of the books that were on my virtual TBR and I've also moved some of the books that were on that list. As you all know, I'm trying to focus on backlist titles in 2021. And so that means for the most part, I'm not reading any books that were published after 2019 unless I already own them. So if I physically own the books that were published in 2020 or 2021, I will read them. So any books that I stumble across that are on my virtual TBR that I do not own and were published in 2020 or later, I am moving those to a future TBR list. So technically my TBR list is still longer than this, but the TBR that I'm focusing on right now are the books that I own as well as the books that are backlist titles on that to read shelf on Goodreads. So I hope that makes sense. So right now that list is standing at 388 titles. In terms of physical TBR books, at the end of January, I had 143 books on my physical TBR. And as of the beginning of March, I had 128. And again, that's been reduced because I read some of them in February. I am unhauling them. Also not included in that number are books that are on my March TBR that I'm currently in the process of reading. Now, if I don't get to them in March, 
I have to roll them over or I have to unhaul them. So either way, those books are not going to be part of my TBR after March. And a lot of the books that I did haul for January, I had already read with the exception of the three book of the month books and the two final books in the In Ember and the Ashes series by Sabah here. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm still definitely reading way more than I'm bringing in a lot of the books as per my own rules. I have to be ready to read or have already read and want them on my shelves. So I'm still sticking to those rules and I'm still doing a pretty good job of whittling down the TBR and just being a little bit more selective in what I've picked up. And I think that's kind of being shown because I've already finished, I want to say three books for the month of March. It is the fifth as of the day that I'm filming this and I have enjoyed every single one of them immensely. So I'm hoping to keep that up in the month of March. My mid-month March wrap-up will be going up next week. So stay tuned for that and you'll hear about all of my thoughts about those books as well. All right, y'all. And I think that is all that I have for you today. As always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post content on Tuesdays, sometimes Saturdays, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.